This is a new Mavic Air 2 drone from DJI. The Cinema 5D Virtual Show is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Tilta, arm your camera. Nanlite, professional lighting solution. And Manfrotto, imagine more. Welcome everybody, this is Cinema 5D. My name is Nino and today we are on the call with DJI. They just announced the Mavic Air 2 and I have a separate video where I tested it out a little bit. But today we're going to talk about the features of the new drone. So in a nutshell, what's what's new with the Mavic Air 2 compared to the original Air? Uh, well, there's actually there's, there's a whole uh, set of new uh, features available um, in all different categories. Uh, so people most likely will notice it looks different. Of course, the, uh, the outer body changed a bit. It got a bit bigger, but um, that has a lot of positive effects. So first of all, the flight time has increased a lot. So now we have up to 34 minutes flight time, which is amazing. I think a lot of people love that. Um, it has a complete new propeller design, so it is way more silent. It is, I would say it's uh, the, one of the most silent drones available on the market at the moment. Uh, then we have a completely redesigned remote controller, which you can see here. You can still remove the, the sticks as well. Um, so the remote controller, I like it a lot personally, um, as it has an amazing battery lifetime. You can attach your smartphone on the top now with the cable. Uh, so I think it's a it's a really cool addition and so that's basically from the uh, things you easily can see but inside the drone uh, it is absolutely feature packed to the <laughs> to the top so one of the most notice noticeable features um, I would say is it's a completely new sensor we use a half inch sensor now um, which boosts 48 megapixels that's incredible so that means uh, we can record photos in 48 megapixels and we also can do 8k hyperlapse videos which is insane the sensor also um, allows us to record 4k video in 60 frames so that's one of the most interesting new features as well so you can now finally um, for the first time with a mavic uh, record 4k 60p um, that is insane and you can record slow motion in 1080p up to 240 frames per second. So you have a lot of room for slowing down your videos, which is amazing. Um, that's, I would say, uh, the most interesting thing regarding the new camera capabilities. Then we have a lot of cool automatic smart functions. I mentioned already um, 8K hyperlapse in general. We completely adopted the hyperlapse functionality from the Mavic 2 series. So you have an absolutely comprehensive and advanced hyperlapse feature set. You can do point-based hyperlapse, you can like waypoint hyperlapse, you can fly in one direction, you can fly freely hyperlapse, you can record those hyperlapse and play them back as well. So you can do those nice transitions from day to night or from night to day. So you can repeat the same flight pass. So that's something people really loved on our uh, Mavic 2 series. It was first introduced with Inspire 2, but now we basically even have that amazing feature in this small drone, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, then we also uh, included the panorama feature, which is one of my personal uh, highlights, to be honest. Um, sometimes you just want to be close to something, but have more wide angle for that extra cool look. Uh, so that, that's something you can uh, do with the uh, Mavic um, Air 2. Really cool functionality. Uh, then we have a feature called Smart Photo, which automatically detects um, the scene and then selects the best settings based on the scene. And you know, I'm a, I used to be a professional photographer for a long time and normally I'm not a big fan of automated features when it comes to photo or video, but I tried the feature out, the smart photo, and I have to say it works absolutely amazing. So normally I always shoot, you know, in AEB and do different exposures and then, you know, do my post-production in Lightroom uh, and merge the photos. But I have to say the smart feature works very well. Uh, we also include HDR photo functionalities. So there's a lot of cool automated features when it comes to 
taking photos in the hyperlapse. And then I would say most of the, uh, one of the most um, amazing feature with this drone is the new obstacle uh, avoidance and tracking functionalities. So uh, this drone is by far the most advanced drone uh, that DJI has been released uh, when it comes to tracking moving objects. And I can absolutely encourage everybody to try it out. It's, it's amazing how the drone follows you, uh, even at high speeds, how it dodges, you know, even small tree branches, stuff like that, and keeps, you, um, keeps track of you. It's, uh, it's really cool. Sometimes, uh, yeah, you can just unbelievable how cool it dodges things and goes through trees or yeah, flies around things. So that's something I, I'm really uh, excited about, especially for outdoor people. I would say this is something really cool when you not necessarily have um, an additional cameraman or drone pilot with you that, that films you. So that's super easy for travel travelers, bloggers to like uh, film themselves um, if they're alone. And another super cool feature uh, that people will be very excited about is also the quick shots. So we included all the cool quick shots, you know, from the Mavic 2 series. Uh, you can do things like automated drony, rocket, helix, circle, and one of my favorites, the asteroid, where you start close and then you go out and, and transform in like a 360 uh, um, a tiny world uh, video. So that's all included here in this small drone. And it's amazing that we were able to still keep the form factor uh, very small. Um, it's way smaller than a Mavic 2, smaller than a Mavic Pro, uh, slightly bigger than a Mavic Air in the first one. But I think with all the additional cool features and the additional fly time, it's definitely worth it. And it's still like super portable, so you can take it everywhere. Thank you, Ferdi. That was quite comprehensive. One of the things I want to add, which uh, amazes me, that it really looks like a shrunken Mavic Pro 2. Uh, it's almost yeah. almost the same, <laughs> but it's uh, it's just smaller, as you said. So the design is clearly taken from there. Uh, one of the things that I noticed compared to the original Air that the wireless transmission, like the transmission, is much much better. Um, I think the original Air, for me, if there was one downside of the original Air, it was the extended Wi-Fi, which never worked as well as the transmission in the original Mavic Pro and also, of course, the 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 Pro Two and the Pro Two uh, the Zoom. Um, so this is something that is much, much better. Yes. Um, actually, I tried really hard to name all the cool updates and features of the Mavic Air to the Mavic Air 2. But that's, to be honest, I, I didn't mention that. And yes, you're absolutely right. I think that is one of the most notable features as well. Because as you said, a lot of people were not that satisfied with the Wi-Fi based um, HD downlink we had in Mavic Air. I really loved Mavic Air, but that was definitely one of the points where I had like, I would love to have something better as well. And I think people will absolutely love the fact that we now include OcuSync 2.0. So you basically get the similar um, uh, HD performance range that you have in the Mavic 2 series, which is to me, still amazing. I still like it's, it. Amazes me how 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 good it works, how how good the quality is, how far you can get. And there's one very very important fact as well. This is dual band. As the Mavic 2, this is dual band. So you have 2.4 and 5 gigahertz um, bands in there. So if you fly in like a dense environment, like a cityscape or something like that, where usually 2.4 is very saturated this automatically will switch to 5.8 gigahertz. You don't even have to do anything. It will automatically detect that and switch to uh, 5.8 gigahertz. And that's, to be honest, um, having such a high quality video link in such a small drone is absolutely amazing. And um, if you compare it to other drones on the market, uh, you won't find anything like that in, in, in this uh, form factor. And to be honest, at that price point already, we didn't even talk about the price yet, which I am I just learned about the price yesterday. And I have to say, I'm really excited that we also got a very interesting price point on that. Yeah, I think um, uh, let's, let's talk about the price in a second, but the wireless transmission, I think this is really important to emphasize because one of the issues, as you said, the, with the Mavic Air, it was okay, but compared even to the original Mavic Pro and the Pro 2, of course, uh, 
There is a kind of a little bit of a lagginess with extended Wi-Fi, which can be problematic and it, it stressed me out sometimes. And I think now it's, it's, it feels the same. I, I film a lot with my uh, Pro 2 uh, um, for a lot of professional productions. And when I used the new Air 2 for the first time, it didn't feel any different. I mean, it's, uh, it's just as responsive and the, re exactly. the reach yeah. is very, very good as well. Yeah, basically it's, um, it's the same technology. And another cool advantage of that is that you also are able to download videos and photos much quicker but because it's, it's like a high bandwidth video transmission system. So you can um, download your hyperlabs or your photos even in HD um, and review your pictures and stuff like that way better and way quicker than with like a normal Wi-Fi based um, HD transmission solution. So that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I noticed this morning I actually tried the Hyperlapse 8K uh, in a very limited way because it's a bit difficult to fly right these days. Um, and the download was, I think, 4.5 megabytes per second. So yeah. the video was yeah. transferred within seconds. Yeah. One other thing, uh, the video video compression, I think that's an important one because, of course, um, what we what I love about the Pro 2 is the fact that you're using H.265 now, which is a much more efficient compression, which allows for much better quality video in 4K than before. Um, one issue I had with the original Mavic Pro was that it's a little bit highly compressed, so you could see some artifacts at times, and that was really removed with the Pro 2. Uh, because it's it's just beautiful 4K and H.265 compression. Now, I was surprised to see that this one also has H.265 surprised because the Mavic Mini, which is, of course, the, the smallest one in the lineup, uh, doesn't have it yet, has highly compressed video. It looks good. It looks, I would say, sometimes even better than from the original Mavic Pro, but... Uh, it is still H.264, but this one also has H.265, right? Yeah, we're super happy to include H.265 in this as well. And I'm as as you, I, I always look for the maximum quality um, in the video codec as well, because basically that's the foundation of the the quality you get. I mean, it doesn't help if you have a great camera, but then have like a poor video codec or poor bitrate. And the bitrate actually is a, it's a very important factor as well. So we we do H.265 in a bitrate up to 120 m uh, megabits. So that basically means, um, as you might know, well, it depends on the implementation, but H.265 often is referred uh, to be uh, like um, double uh, as efficient as H.264. De always depends on the implementation, of course. But yeah, having up to 120 Mbits H.265 on this, I think, is a big leap forward. And I'm, I'm super happy, like personally, to have um, all that uh, information in that codec. So to get the maximum out of, of, um, of the camera. And we have the Cine-like camera profiles as well, which is super interesting for professional or amateurs that want to get the maximum out of their footage in post. So it's it's easy to grade and yeah, so you're you don't have like that baked in look. So you're more flexible to match it with other cameras. Um, and I think that that that's just great for you know indie filmmakers and 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 yeah, bloggers or travelers. Yeah, I read in the press release also that you implemented a technology that kind of keeps track of the air traffic around the drone. So we're super happy uh, to release the first consumer drone that integrates our AirSense technology, which is based on an aviation standard, ADS-B. So this detects other manned aircraft in your environment, in your area, and can uh, warn you. So you can take precautions, land the drone, uh, fly somewhere else, and it pops up on your map. I think that's a great way to make, um, to make drone flying even safer. Uh, and it might be required in some countries and regulations um, from, of countries uh, for all drones that are um, heavier than 250 grams. So for this class, it's, it's, a, it's the first time we have a drone that includes this feature. Um, and we will roll it out um, in North America to the um, COVID-19 situation at the moment. There is a, a shortage in uh, supply chain, but it will be rolled out in North America. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, I think it was quite comprehensive. Let's move on to pricing and availability of the new drone. Pricing and availability. Um, so, as I initially mentioned, we're super happy to offer um, this drone and all those amazing features we talked about at a very, very affordable price. Um, so, it will start at uh, $799. 
and that's the basic package where you basically already have everything you need to fly the drone battery remote controller everything is included and then we have the as always with dji um, a combo the fly more combo which is uh, let me check 988 dollars and it includes um, a set of nd filters a very nice bag where you can safely store the drone um, three batteries and a charging hub as well so i think that's a very very uh, cool pricing for this amazing technology so basically we're talking about half the price of the mavic 2 pro with the same or sometimes even better video compression exactly so yeah it's 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 a really really cool deal <laughs> yeah so nice. basically half the price of the mavic 2 pro yeah and when will it be available globally? Uh, it will be available globally in mid of May 2020. That's pretty soon. Wow. So let's hope people can get out of their homes soon again to actually try the drone. <laughs> it's, it's a good motivation. So people have something to look forward to. <laughs> Last question. Because this is a new sensor design here, a new camera, uh, we will also need new ND filters. Do you know if they are available from the start? Uh, yes, it's it's a it's a new uh, lens design, and um, as I said in the in the combo, there will be a set of ND filters in, uh, included, and oh, nice. um, there should be the ND filters should be available. Uh, um, um, if you if you don't buy the combo, they will be available um, um, yeah, separately. So yes, there will be ND filters, and another cool thing is it's very easy to change the ND filters. So you know we always. Uh, design our cameras to make it very easy to put on ND filters and to remove them. Um, we, don't, we, we encourage people um, that are like ambitious about filmmaking to, to change filters. And so that's the reason why, why we make it very easy and convenient to put them on and off. That's one of my personal Amazing. things. I always urge the developers to make that easy. Absolutely. And I think it's a great idea to include this with the Fly More combo because I think so far it was always a separate purchase. Separate yes, purchase. I think that's the first time that we included in the combo. And I think that's a really cool thing. So people can straight away experiment with ND filters. And I think most people know that ND filters help a lot to get better video results or even like for time lapses. That's something I think in the Fly More combo, there will be a very strong ND filter. I think like a 265. Um, Yes, I think so. So that's that's uh, important for time lapse to get like very smooth footage with long exposures. So yeah, that's something people can enjoy and, and play around with. Great. Looking forward. And I will definitely try the drone a little bit more over the next couple of weeks. I hope it will be less windy than the last couple of days here, which limited the ability to fly. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to, to trying all the functions. Yeah, although it's it's very very stable in high winds as well, so I think that's one of the the biggest advantages compared to the mini as well. I mean, there's a lot of advantages, but um, this is I would say uh, it's very close or maybe even the same as Mavic 2 Pro when in terms uh, when it comes to wind stability. So I flew it in in high winds in Switzerland, Bulgaria, and Germany, and it's it's very stable. It's very capable. It's it's a complete new propulsion system, new motors, ECs. So it's very stable in high winds. I agree. It was quite stable still. I was just a bit scared because I didn't know the drone. I got the warning that uh, return to home is now deactivated because of the high winds. So <laughs> I was really careful with this. But yeah, it was absolutely safe. <laughs> of course, always fly safe. Thank you so much, Ferdy. Thank you to Frankfurt. And uh, I hope we see each other again soon at a future DJI event or a trade show when we can, you know, actually leave our homes again. Absolutely. I'm sure that will happen. I'm looking forward to it as well. And thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned to Cinema 5D for a lot more product news in our virtual show, our replacement for the NAB show that never happened. And uh, yes, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thanks. Mm -hmm.